Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest episode of the Iona Athletics Podcast, your source for all the latest news surrounding the Iona Gales. I'm your host, Mike Phillips. On the road for a little bit this week, so we're actually not able to get into the studio to begin the show, but we don't want to leave you out the podcast, so we are going to give you the recap here without some video. We will be heading into the studio in just a bit. We'll be joined by two members of the Iona Track and Field Program, Jen Allo and Egle Mornete. You've heard about their exploits over the past few weeks in our recap section. We will talk to them about the season as a whole, the difference between the track and field and cross-country mentality, all that good stuff. We'll come back in our interview in just a bit. Make sure you stay tuned until the end of the podcast as well for the upcoming week in Iona Athletics. Should be another busy one. A lot has been happening around Iona. Let's dive into the news and notes. We'll start there right now. Beginning with the fact that the women's lacrosse program was ranked ninth in the Max Preseason poll last week. They got 14 votes in the poll. And the win looking to take a big step forward under new coach Lauren Kahn. We will hear more about the lacrosse program in the coming weeks. On to the track and field program. On the men's side, Jonathan D'Souza was named the MAC Men's Track Performer of the Week after a strong performance at the Metropolitan Championships, where he won the 3,000 meters in a career-best time of 8 minutes, 24.73 seconds. This is the third straight week a Gale has taken home some hardware for the track and field team. The previous two weeks, one of our guests today, Eglin Morete, won the weekly award on the women's side, so congratulations to Jonathan D'Souza for his performance there. On to men's basketball, some news about the current and former players. We'll start with the current team. Tawan A.G. and E.J. Crawford were named as two of the MAC's 10 representatives in the Dos Equis National 3x3U Championship midseason watch list. This event, that takes place in April after the season ends, features each conference sending a team to a FIBA-sanctioned 3x3 tournament in Atlanta, which will also serve as a huge draft showcase for seniors across the country. For more information on what this means for them, Check out our website, www.icgales.com. Also a note, one of the basketball team's alumni on the men's side, 2014 graduate Mike Poole, was named as one of 16 basketball players who will train to compete for the USA basketball team in 3 by 3 Olympic qualifying. 3-on-3 three three basketball was a new Olympic sport this year. Poole will be one of 16 men competing for four spots on the qualifying team. That team will have a chance to advance always to the Olympics this summer. For more about that, also, check out our website, www.icgales.com, for more information about Mike Poole's quest to become an Olympian. Now, let's get to our recap portion of the schedule. We'll go to Tuesday, February 4th. Women's basketball lost at home to Maris, 73-56 on a Kids' Day matinee at the Heinz Athletic Center. Cheyenne Moy led Iona with 14 points. Paul Weeks, Juan Camilleone added 10 each. Worth mentioning, though, the Gales did end this game on a 17-0 run. And why is it worth mentioning? Let's go ahead to Thursday, February 6th. The women's basketball team took the momentum from that run, carry over to the first leg of the Buffalo trip, topping Kanisha 60 to 57. Juan Camillion played a starring role in this game, tying in career high of 26 points, 11 of 23 shooting, with the 11 made field goals setting a new career high. Morgan Rayku also back in action for the first time since January 16th, chipped in three points and grabbed three rebounds off the bench. Let's go ahead to Friday, February 7th. Men's basketball back in the win column. Topping Quinnipiac 73-52 up in Hamden to start off the Connecticut road trip on a good note. All five Iona starters scored in double figures in the game, led by a stat sheet stuffing ever from EJ Crawford. 18 points, 7 rebounds, 6 assists, 2 steals. Tuan Agee, a double-double with 11 points and 13 rebounds as the Gales get back in the win column there. Women's lacrosse also begins their season, but they lose 16-5 at Lehigh. Katan Briskin scored three goals for Iona, while Sarah Stewart added the other two for the Gales. We'll go ahead to Saturday, February 8th. Women's basketball defeats Niagara 70-58 to sweep the Buffalo trip for the first time since the 2016-2017 season. Juana Camillion continued her hot play, scoring 17 points, making it six straight games in double figures for the Gales. Paul Weeks, Morgan Rayku each contribute 11 points for Iona in the win. The Gales now have surpassed last year's win total already. They've had six wins this season, beat last year's total of five, still over a month to go, so progress definitely being made for sure. The swimming and diving program has also competed in its first postseason matches at the Boston University Open Winter Invitational. Gales posted 17 top 10 finishes over the course of the two-day event, including third-place finishes for 
Adrienne Bolello in the 100-meter backstroke, Ashley Kay in the 200-meter breaststroke, and the women's 400-meter freestyle relay team. So good job from the Gales up in Boston. Finally, on Sunday, February 9th, men's basketball completes the Connecticut trip with a 78-54 win over Fairfield, a sweep by the Gales of Connecticut. They outscored the Stags 40-23 in the second half to run away with this one. Isaiah Ross led the Gales in scoring with 23 points, including 6 of 7 shooting from beyond the arc. EJ Crawford had 22 points on 9 of 13 shooting, while Tawan AG chips in 17 points, 7 rebounds. Gales victorious there, and a great run to end the week for Iona basketball. The men's and women's teams go combined 4-0 and over the last four days of the week. Will they carry the momentum forward into next week? When they have some more big games on the schedule, we will find out about that and where they'll be playing in our upcoming schedule portion of the program. But up next, our interview with Egle Mornete and Jen Otto of the track and field program right after this. All right, we are back here on the Iona Athletics Podcast with two members of the Iona track and field program. With me today are Jeremy Nuttall and Egle Morinete. Guys, welcome to the studio. How are you? Great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Not a problem. We haven't talked to any uh, runners in a while, so we wanted to get some, some of you guys back in the studio. I started talking ahead of the track and field championship. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'll start with these guys. So I'll start with you, Egle. So what way did you decide that you wanted to be a runner? Oh, I have no idea like <laughs> why I signed for this, but <laughs> no, I love running. Um, this is like a great way to you know use my energy, just... Use my time and um, found new friends. Um, and I, I don't know, I just love the sport. It's simple and at the same time, it gives you so much, like mentally, physically, and that's why I love it. Yeah, that makes sense. What about you, Jenna? Why did you decide to be a runner? Yeah, so I started off playing soccer uh, my freshman year of high school. And um, from there, a couple of my friends were on the track team, and I kind of moved over to hang out with them. and loved it ever since <laughs> yeah you guys yeah that the track team is a very interesting team because there's a lot of personalities on it what's yeah. it like like dealing with all these different people from all these different places and you all have that love of running i would say we're doing a great job we i mean we're having a lot of fun and it's like yeah we have a lot of personalities including <laughs> us too yeah, yeah for sure but yeah, yeah, yeah it's pretty cool also because we've got so many different countries on the team you know and yeah i think we all really like it i think everyone like blends together really well. You yeah. don't like Gemma, yeah. but like we don't tell you. Like, <laughs> often, so. Yeah, well, I'm from, I'm from like 45 minutes away from here. Yeah, yeah. so. Yeah, so, well, also I got you here. We talked to your coach, Joe Pienta, at the beginning of the year. It'd be fun uh, Coach Pienta stories. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm glad you want to take this one. <sighs> okay, let's pick one one. So, um, probably one of the, I don't know, fun, but like really weird one. So, last year, going to nationals, I think like 7 a.m. in the airport, he looks at me like straight face and just says, would you come to my funeral? <laughs> like, sure, Joe, I hope so. I will never need to do that, but yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, yeah, our coach. Yeah, he's certainly one of a kind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, obviously you guys are part of the winning cross country program for the MAC. Agley went, went to the NCAA championship, so. Obviously, it's a big switch when you go from cross country to track. What's that like when you have to switch from running outdoors all the time to now we're going inside or running set distances? What's that like, the switch? Um, it's definitely, for me, it's more of a mental adjustment. Yeah. Um, just because not only is it shorter distance, but you're also running on a 200 meter track as opposed to like outside with like hills and grass and everything like that. But I think after like one or two races, you kind of get back in the swing of it. You know, like we've all done track before, so it's nothing too foreign for us yeah i agree it's just more mental and i i hate laps and there's so many laps <laughs> in the area but yeah. yeah it takes a while and i missed um two seasons because of injuries so it's like yeah it's just it takes time to get back and it's a lot of fun yeah so what are your what are your favorite events to run on the indoor track circuit um mine would be the mile um i'm a huge fan of 200s <laughs> well, I did shot put, but you know, I mean, it's not race, but <laughs> um, so I did. I, I like mile. Um, I like three k. 
one uh, K. Well, I mean, it's, I've been doing the athletics reports every week, and, the, and John, our executive producer for the podcast here, sends them in. And I always see your names popping up, like you on the three K, you on a couple of different spots. So you guys are always doing very well on these things. So it's got to admit, got to be fun to be winning in those. Yeah, it's good. I mean, it's it's early in the season, but it's good to have some good like momentum going, and hopefully keep building off of that. I mean, yeah, I guess you enjoy and. Um, it's like not just like winning or like taking getting a good place, but it's like about the result, how you felt in that race, and you know getting moving forward, getting prepared for max and yeah. aces and yeah. Yeah. So like, what's the difference between when you get to a cross country meet compared with the environment, the indoor track meet? Like, what's the difference in terms of like what the atmosphere is like there? I would say cross country is more team. It's all about team. You have your yeah, five sure. six girls with you, and like getting ready together and like racing race plan and. Indoors, outdoors, just more individual. Mm -hmm. You have your own event. You, yeah, I enjoy cross country way more. Just having my girls yeah, around. <laughs> yeah. So like, is that something that like takes like a little bit of a switch as well? Turn like, well, I'm not running with the team. I'm running my specific thing, and I have to work worry about my thing, and not necessarily what like Gemma's doing with her thing, something like that. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that I love about cross country too. Is that it's like there's kind of less pressure because not only are you running for yourself, you know, you're running for your team. You can like kind of work off of each other a little bit more. So yeah, it's definitely more of a mental switch. It is a mental switch. And also I feel like there has to be some sort of training switch as well. It's obviously like cross country's longer distances mm -hmm. and the elements. How do you have to change your training to get ready for like an indoor track event compared to like running for cross country? Um, well, indoor track is probably, it's a little more harder on the body I'd say, right? Yeah, I mean, we're doing more workouts and on the, you know, you're on a prep on track or intro track armory and for cross country, it's like tempo runs, far legs, more outdoors. A lot of hills, yeah. Yeah, hills. It's more like strength based, I guess you could say, right? Yeah. You guys are coming up to the MAC indoor track and field channel. It's coming up later this month. So, what events are the most fun to watch when all the conference teams come together? What do you guys enjoy being there for the most? Ooh, what do you think? <laughs> Definitely middle distance. Because, <laughs> like, we have people in middle distance. Yeah. And, like, we don't watch, like, um, high jumpers because we don't have people there. But, I don't know, mile is really a um, good one. Yeah. Training. Mainly, I think just if you know people racing it, it's yeah. going to be fun. Yeah. I'm sure you guys have like friends competing for other schools and like even people you've met over the years. So right, that's definitely right. part of like a little reunion kind of feel. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks again, Egla and Jeff, for coming in the studio. I really appreciate it. And best of luck the rest of the season. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. And there you have it. That was our interview with Iona track and field athletes, Gemma Nuttall and Egla Morinete. For the full interview with Gemma and Egla, check out our YouTube page, youtube.com slash Icy Gales. Sunday, Monday, happy days. All right, we are back. It's time to look ahead to the upcoming week in Iona Athletics. A busy one for sure. Let's go ahead to Tuesday, February 11th. Women's basketball team back home hosting the Monmouth Hawks at center at the Heinz Athletic Center. First time these two teams met, they played a 36-33 Iona winning effort down in West Long Branch. I feel like there might be some more scoring this time around. Come on down to Heinz and find out at 7. Now we go ahead to Wednesday, February 12th. The swimming program in the MAC championships up in Buffalo, day number one there. Let's go ahead to Thursday, February 13th. Day two of the MAC swimming championships up in Buffalo. This men's and women's swimming teams will be up there trying to win the MAC. Go ahead to Friday, February 14th, Valentine's Day, a busy day for the Iona Athletic programs. The swimming teams, day three of the MAC championships up in Buffalo. Men's basketball. At home against Manhattan at 7 at the Heinz Athletic Center. No better way to celebrate Valentine's Day than coming down to Heinz seeing the Max fiercest basketball rivalry in action. So Manhattan, Iona at 7 at the Heinz Center. Track and field. We just spoke to two of our track and field athletes earlier. They have two separate meets going on. Some of the track and field athletes will be at the David Henry Valentine meet in Boston. Day number one of that. Some will also go to the Iowa State Classic day number one. And the baseball team, welcome to the recap portion of the program. You will be going down to Charleston. Take on Charleston in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Let's go ahead to Saturday, February 15th. The MAC Swimming Championships conclude up in Buffalo. Day number four for those teams. Track and field, day two of the David Henry Valentine meet in Boston. And day two of the Iowa State Classic. Women's basketball hits the road, take on Fairfield. 
And for the first time since this fall, golf back in the mix. Golf taking on the Invitational Savannah Harbor down in Savannah, Georgia, day number one there. And finally, also I forgot baseball, I'm sorry. Baseball taking on Maryland in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. And they're taking on Charleston once again, Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Finally, Sunday, February 16th, golf, day two of the Invitational Savannah Harbor in Savannah, Georgia. Men's basketball, home again, taking on the Marriott Red Foxes at one at the Heinz Athletic Center. The Gales lost up at Poughkeepsie a couple weeks ago looking for some revenge in that one. And the lacrosse team, home opener against New Hampshire at noon at Mazella Field. First action at Mazella since November, so... You have two choices. You want to come on down to campus on Sunday. You can watch men's basketball or you can watch lacrosse. And that will do it for the upcoming week in Iona Athletics. For full game times, schedules, information, and you could possibly want to know about Iona Athletics, check out our website, www.icgales.com. You can also follow us on social media. Just search for our handle, at ICGales, across all major social media platforms. You know, the brand new episode of the Iona Athletics podcast coming out next week, but... Until then, keep fighting the good fight, Gale Nation. Fighting the good fight.